Hey everybody, welcome back. Thanks for thanks for coming back. All right, let this uh, room get back to population. Back to population. Back pop. I don't know. It's a little early. <laughs> Why are the bootcut jeans so limited? Um, you know, going back to what I was saying earlier, um, if something isn't available in the um, in 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 a size or a style that you're looking for, it's because of the demand. So if there isn't enough demand, I can't produce it. So um, we do have a couple of groovy guy options. I'll, I'll probably do more groovy guy. I want to adjust the fit a little bit, uh, make it a little bit less flared on the bottom, um, and then uh, and then we'll do that like via special order thing. Because who wears bootcut jeans anymore? I like bootcut jeans. I like the groovy guy. I wear them. I think they're a lot of fun to wear, um, but I think they might be a little too groovy for some folks. Um, so I just want to tone it down a little bit, and uh, I think that they'll be, I think that they'll be a. a a good fit um you know and just going back you know go watch uh uh you know once upon a time in hollywood and see how cool brad pitt looks in bootcut jeans um i think i think a lot of people uh uh you know that that vintage style you know that's one thing that kind of annoys me about the whole vintage jeans um you know the vintage denim kind of community is they always forget about the 60s and 70s. They never, they never, they, they seem to hate that style. They seem to despise it. Um, you know, and everything has to look like you're a, a you know, a, a train conductor or an engineer or something like that. And, you know, that's fine. It's just, I like the 60s and 70s style a lot more. I think it's a lot of fun. Um, groovy and hippie and like, yeah, I, I, I I'm, I'm a long haired freaky dicky hippie. Come on. Um, Okay, so I was speaking a little bit about, um, you know, us not being able to travel. We're not seeing our friends. We're not going to these trade shows, you know. And so we're doing a lot of this showing of our collection online. We're doing calls with our customers. Uh, we produced a video for them to see uh, the collection. And it's one of these situations where, you know, we're getting a lot of feedback from our customers and it's just it's, some for some it's really bleak you know we've had a, we've had a couple of retailers close down and uh these were great retailers these re, these are retailers that have been in business for a long time we've got you know people who are who are struggling and you know the the i know i know it's not just the retailers that are struggling there's a lot of people that are struggling and it's like um it's tough you know if if you can support you know your 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 retailer, not just your retailer, any industry. You know the movie theater industry, the arts, all this kind of stuff. If you can now, is a good time to help because every cent people appreciate it a lot. So, and even if you can't spend, talk about what you like and share it with others. You know that is that that's worth more than spending money. Um, because, you know, if you enjoy something, share it with others and you, you know, sharing that with others, if you bring that person into that new coffee shop or denim shop or, or, or theater or, or anything, you know, you're doing so much work for that person. It, it helps them so much because just, just trying to find new fans and bring people in, that's a, that's a tough task for a lot of people. And, um, so any way that you guys can show your support right now is like it's so appreciated, and it's not not just for us, you know, our retail partners, and and just not our, not even our industry, anything. If you guys can, you know, show your love, you know, it's not just with your dollars, you know, use your passion um, to do that, and uh, that way, you know, we can preserve kind of what's left, you know, because I think after this, there's gonna be a lot of you know, I'm talking to some retailers and they're like, yeah, I'm closing my store, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to have it only online. And it's like, and that's fine. You know, that's fine. But there's something about physical retail and, you know, people, uh, you know, I hate, I hate seeing these articles. Oh, physical retail is dead and this is dead. And like, it's not dead. You know, people like physical retail. 
people like going to a store, trying things on, talking shop, you know, you know, it's like saying the coffee, you know, why, what, it's like, is the coffee shop dead because you can make an espresso at home? No, people still like going to the coffee shop, you know, um, because there's a, there's a thing about going to the coffee shop, sitting down, enjoying, you know, going on your laptop, you know, enjoying the AC, just, you know, trying things that you can't do normally, you know, you can't try jeans on at an online store, you know, so retail isn't dead, it just needs to change. And that change is for a lot of retailers is having a better online presence so that they can balance their physical retail with their online retail. And that's, that's what needs to happen. So some people before this didn't have much of an online presence and they figured it out real quick. You know, they had to react. Some people couldn't or didn't and they're in this really bad situation. And on top of other things happening to their shops, it's just like, you know, it's, 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 it's tough. You know, I, I read an article the other day and I thought it was really dumb and I don't really respond to negativity, but it was like this article about jeans being dead and jeans are dead and nobody's gonna wear jeans anymore because we all work at home. And I'm like, number one, most people didn't wear jeans to the office anyways. Okay. Um, so jeans aren't dead because people like sweatpants. But this person was citing stuff like retail sales are down and this and that, and that's why jeans are dead. And I'm like, yeah, retail sales are down at those big box stores because they're not offering anything different than any of the other big box stores. Like, you know, consumers are, are deciding to buy better things. And in our realm, you know, things are, things are going well. And I know this because we're doing okay. And you know, before the pandemic, we were, we were doing good. Um, and I know from other retailers, the same thing. And like, if you're making, you know, I know that in enthusiast worlds, like they're doing good because people are learning about better things and they want more, less, more of less, less of more better things. You know, they want to have the better shoes. They don't want to have, you know, 10 pairs of shoes. Although some people do. I mean, I have a gajillion pairs, but that's a different story. Um, but you know, you want to have, uh, uh, the best jeans. You don't necessarily want to have four pairs of crappy jeans. Um, so I think people are deciding what their wallets, what they want. And some retailers haven't adjusted to that or, or they haven't adjusted to it yet. So, um, anyways, I, I wrote this person a, a message and I, I tried to put them in some perspective into them because I just don't like that headline going out that jeans are dead and blah, 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 because it does implant an idea in people's heads. Um, so I wanted to reiterate, reiterate that this is what's happening. And, and, and you know, this, for, at least from my perspective and the perspective of other retailers that I know and, and, and what's going on there. So I mean, they didn't respond because that's not the article that they want to write, um, which is fine, I guess, but you know, uh, jeans are dead. Jeans are gone. It's over for jeans. I don't think so. You know, it's like saying Coca-Cola is dead because health drinks are here. Uh, uh, you know, um, jeans are the default. They're going to be around forever. Um, so yeah, anyways, that, that article annoyed me and I, I anyways, Jeans forever, guys. Selvage Foundation. Um, I love your last couple of videos, but they aren't on YouTube. Oh, uh, maybe. I, I can go and see what I haven't posted up, and I'll, I'll put it up on there. It's just I find that the YouTube viewership has gone down a lot for those videos because pretty much everybody's watching them on IG. But I know that some people don't have IG, so I'll, I'll, I'll make sure to put them up there. Uh, status on the chenille list, jacket for Joker and Batman. And, and Pickle Rick, you mentioned before that there could easily be done. Yes, I'm going to get those uh, into the approval process, and they are likely going to happen. Uh, so uh, the, it's a good chance that those are going to happen. Um, jeans will never die, just like R&R. Uh, &R. I'm assuming that's rock and roll. Um, because there was a brand of jeans called Rock and Republic, uh, I used to sell a lot of those back in the day when I was on the, uh, the sales floor. Um, those are gone. Jeez. Those jeans, 
I, I, I could have an, an entire live stream just about selling jeans uh, on, on, the, on the floor. That was a very, very popular brand. Um, you know, in the, in the, er, in the mid two, early 2000s, mid 2000s, like Hollywood, you know, California jeans were very big. True Religion, Rock Republic, Seven Jeans. Seven Jeans still around, but uh, antique denim. Like it was like, it was pretty much all about the pocket. And there was a jean that Rock and Republic made with Victoria Beckham with crowns on the butt. And we, they, they would retail at like 450 bucks. And it was like, you know, they look good on girls. You know, they, 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 they did, did everything right that they were supposed to do fit wise. But the denim was such crap. It was like the thinnest, paperiest denim you could ever imagine. And like we would, the returns that we would get on those, like people would sometimes come out of the change room and they'd bust. So, mind you, maybe they were wearing them too tight. I don't know. But uh, they were very popular despite their their denim quality issues. Um, and uh, then they started adding crystals on those things. And even on their regular logo pockets, those crystal jeans, they were like $400, $500, $700. Um, I remember we had a pair of seven jeans with like embroidery and crystals on them and they were like 1200 bucks and they were selling they were set like we would get a shipment of them in and maybe we get like 20 pairs and they'd be gone in like a day or two just the like customers would come in and be like do you have them and we're like yeah and like okay i want them like and they just give me three colors like give me give me all the crystal jeans that you have and uh what's what's weird to me is the amount of jeans of those crystal jeans that I've sold in my life and the fact that I never see them on anybody ever. Like I, even when I walk into thrift stores, I don't see them there. So where are, what happened to all of these jeans? Um, Cause I'm sure those brands sold millions of pairs. These were big brands. They sold millions of them and I never see anybody wearing them. Um, it's very odd to me that like a brand like that could be so popular for, for a short amount of years, they were every department store in the world, every like, you know, fashion retailer in the world had these products and they were selling them like crazy. And then they disappeared. And I don't, you know, you'd think that people would still be wearing their jeans. Maybe crystal jeans aren't so popular anymore. But uh, what happened to all of them? That, that, that's a good, that might be a fun documentary. What happened to all the crystal jeans? Um, Rock and roll music, yeah, yeah, I have figured rock and roll. Um, I need some, I need some rock and republic jeans. Uh, I needed some rock and Re- republic jeans in a lifted pickup truck, a flexion shirt, and a beer. That was a very popular look. My goodness. Um, but that was like every jean shop was selling that. You know, uh, affliction tees, Ed Hardy tees. Um, you know, that kind of graphic, you know, kind of tattoo graphic t-shirt, uh, rock Republic and true religions. Um, yeah, that's all, that's all gone. That's really all gone. You know, that, that, what happened to all of that stuff? That's a good question. What happened to it all? Um, they're in Paris Hilton's closet. Um, maybe she, she definitely, uh, is responsible for, uh, some of that look, um, you know, Juicy Couture, I remember those, those were a very popular item in the, in the store I was working in. So popular. Um, yeah. No more reflection. Oh my God. Yeah. What happened to them? Uh, I saw, uh, I saw a documentary on YouTube, uh, that I haven't watched it yet, but, uh, it was, it was on Ed Hardy, the, the tattoo artist. And I, I want to learn more about him. Uh, I think maybe too many people don't realize that that might have been a real tattoo artist, uh, a very, very, very talented one um, and and influential one. Uh, Maybe people just associate it with bro T-shirts. But uh, yeah, I want to I mean, I want to learn more about the man. Uh, I don't have any tattoos, but uh, I I do appreciate the art. Um, On a college budget, what's the most wacky jeans I can get? Check our sales section. 
because sometimes some of those wacky things end up in there and you could probably get something really cool for not uh not too too much money um our sales section is great by the way um there's there's a lot of good options in there um and or subscribe to our newsletter because every wednesday i send out a sale uh like a, i put something on sale and it's available for sale for 24 hours so uh check out those emails um if, you, if, if you're not subscribed to our email list you are definitely missing out um they're probably here on Earth somewhere. That's the mad thing. Probably in a landfill by now. I, yeah, I hope not. Um, but to be fair, I think that those genes were so thin that they, they might have actually just disintegrated. Um, <laughs> so that might have been okay. Um, uh, not even a joke. One, two, WVU for college. What's WVU? Not WVU. Um, once in a while, I see a guy wearing an affliction tee. I mean... They gotta be somewhere. Somebody's gotta still be wearing them. Um, dude, you need to make a movie about salvage and all these existing brands and all those famous uh, ones that are gone. It would be neat to go and do that. Um, I don't know if I'm the man for it myself, but I do know people who are, um, who, who probably could do something like that. And I would, I would definitely support something like that. Um, but yeah. Oh, okay. Back to carbon fiber. Somebody was asking me. Can we make carbon fiber jeans? The answer is we kind of just did. Um, so this is a jean. We're calling it the Firewall Selvage. And this is a black dem. It's got this uh, kind of red line selvage ID here. Um, and what really makes this denim special is the fact that it is made with carbon so it's made with 32 percent carbon and this is in the material that is used to make carbon fiber so as it is right now this is the building block for carbon fiber and the way carbon fiber works is that they superheat this carbon to an incredible temperature and then it becomes I guess the superheated form of carbon that then they weave to make carbon fiber. As it is in this state, it is what is used in uh, fire uh, retardant, no, fireproof garments. So it doesn't burn, uh, which is really neat. So the weft yarns are made with this carbon material. And I've lit it. I've lit the weft on fire. It does not burn. The warp is made with cotton, so these jeans will burn. Uh, it's just that part of it won't. And uh, our aim was to make something out of carbon fiber, but that wasn't that wasn't something that we could achieve. So um, we we basically we came back to the building blocks of carbon fiber, which is something called pre-carbon. Um, and uh, we made jeans with this. So this is coming for spring, summer 21. Um, yeah, so we somebody was asking if we can make jeans out of carbon fiber. No, but pre-carbon, the building blocks of carbon fiber, yes. Do you plan to make more tech wear denims? We're always interested in doing this kind of stuff. I love, you know, pulling from the tech uh, material world and, and trying to see what we can do in denim. Although... I don't think that we've penetrated the tech garment people yet. Um, maybe it's our, our branding, our messaging isn't strong enough to, I don't know, if maybe, you know, these are things that, um, I don't know who I have to write an email to or send information to, but uh, maybe there's some blogs or stuff that I need to to that need to be made aware of this kind of stuff. I also feel like, you know, in the raw denim subreddit on Reddit, I could talk about stuff, but if I go into like another subreddit, I feel like I'm just like shilling and I don't do that. So it's kind of weird. It's kind of hard for me to be like in the tech, uh, you know, subreddit and be like, Hey guys, I made these jeans. You want to you know, check them out? Um, I don't think people like that. So um, I think it has to come like grassroots where somebody who is in that community discovered it and then shared it um so i'm just waiting for that person to come along and do that so uh, i guess uh we'll see if we can if it'll grow that way but maybe i need to approach a little bit more uh blogs and, and show these uh the technical aspects of these garments off a little bit more um 
Needed to see more naturally faded Toxic Avengers. Got mine in April and with this fairly... It got mine in April and with fairly regular wear, starting to see some more uh, nice blues forming. We'll share those images. I'm sure people are going to love to see those. We did post some uh, faded images of like the Frankenstein denim, which is a very similar denim to the, to the Toxic Avenger. So you can get an idea of what those are going to fade like. Um... Okay, I'm a Spirit 2 re-released and unsigned for Isaac. Okay, okay, I'm a Spirit 2 jacket would be fire. It'll eventually happen. That'll that'll eventually happen for sure. Um, carbon jeans, you never seem, uh, you never cease to impress. Well, we we always aim to impress. Um, uh, Picks of the Lord of Nep fades. I don't have any yet. Um, uh, okay, uh, la 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 la. Swiss Jeans Freak probably has them all in his archives. And that's what I love about Swiss Jeans Freak. He collects all denim. I'm sure he has, like, a lot of mass market mainstream stuff. He's not just a raw denim lover. He is a denim lover, period. And it wouldn't surprise me if he's got a bunch of those kind of jeans in his super massive collection. He's got, I think, over 10,000 pairs of jeans and 5,000 jackets. So... He's got a lot, and he lives with them. They're in his home. It's amazing. He's uh, he's an amazing guy. Rudy, if you guys uh, haven't uh, uh, discovered the Swiss Jeans Freak yet, uh, look him up on Instagram. You will be very impressed. He's a, he's a fun guy, very nice guy, sweet human, and uh, he loves denim. He's, he's, he's the biggest lover of denim, perhaps, in the entire world. Um, uh any idea when you'll be making a black heavyweight? We'll probably do that again. Uh, I, I can see another elephant uh, all black uh, option coming down the road. Um, what weight would you consider those crystal jeans? Yeah, probably five or six ounces. Like back in the day, that shit. That stuff was light. Eight ounces, maybe. It was light. It was very light. Um, okay. What are your favorite daily drivers? Uh, my left hand twills. I, 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 they're they're really disintegrating at this point. I, I, I need to start patching them because holes are forming everywhere, and uh, I'm I'm going to be in a lot of trouble if I if I don't fix these soon. Um, you know, I always tell customers I'll you know do regular maintenance, but I also like the fact that jeans get really destroyed. So uh, I'm just trying to get to that sweet spot of like ultimate destruction. And uh, and still has repairability left in them. So, uh, yeah. Show off your washed Huntsman. Are they uh, are they out of the wash yet? Um, I, think it's almost... I, don't, I don't think they're dry yet. They're just in the washing machine. Um, are the Fox brand that I'm based on Fox fiber cotton? They are. They are using Fox fiber cotton. That's an American grown brown cotton. Um, uh, they're wet. Any plans on different colors of the tatami jeans? Maybe. Um, maybe. Yeah, these are just wet. <laughs> Sorry, guys. They look cool, though. They really, man, they really look cool after wash. Holy cow. Look at this. The texture really comes out uh, after wash. And there's so much bluer. I like washing my jeans, by the way. Um, it, you know, I like this washed touch and look. Um, I'll, I'll send some more pictures later once these are dry. But uh, I just like that kind of uh, uh, texture that you get with a, with a one wash. So uh, I encourage you, if you like that kind of look, to give it a try. What are the jeans you are wearing? These are the... Uh, weird guy. Sorry, they're the easy guy left hand twill selvage and uh, These are a couple of years old now and I would say that in that time of me owning these I probably wore these 80% of my life. So They've they faded a lot. They're, they're really thin at this point. I've really I mean, they're they're like pajamas They're very 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 comfortable. Thank you um, Okay, well what I want to do is wrap things up here, but first, we've got to try some snacks together. Um, what do we got today? Risa, what do we got on today's snack, snack menu? Tomorrow. Okay, let's... Uh, um, we do have a couple of Okinawan things. Okinawan snacks. 
Oh, what's going on here? What should be my first pair of jeans from Naked and Famous? Left hand twill. I'm a big fan of those. Uh, as because uh, that's what I wear, and I think it's a great starter jean for a lot of people. It gets you right into the uh, into the mix of, of the raw denim uh, life. Okay, so we've got a couple of things. Uh, I'll let you guys vote on uh, on what's going to happen. So let's let's pull a couple of things out here. Um. Uh. Yeah. Okay. So we were just in Okinawa. So we brought home some Okinawan. Uh, uh, options snack time indeed so uh okay so let's uh yeah let's try that that's another option it's like uh it's recommended three oh, okay well we'll do that next time uh I'll, I'll let them pick and then we'll we'll, we'll we'll try one of these um any special ice cream for next snack time Yes, next time. You know what? I want to show you one of my favorite ice cream. It's not ice cream, but uh, these things are so good. Okay. Okay, there's there's a lot of options here. So you guys pick, and this is what we're going to do today. So, we've got a couple of options here. We were in Okinawa, so they had an Okinawan, um, I guess, exclusive Doritos. And uh, these are wasabi and show you so soy sauce wasabi flavored Doritos and uh, you know Okinawan themed uh, packaging here. Okinawa and Taiwan. Okinawa and Taiwan. Okay, so exclusive to Okinawa and Taiwan. Uh, so these uh, are uh, wasabi and soy sauce flavored Doritos. Next, we've got uh, Habu hot pepper. Uh, so I guess a hot, a very what is that? A W S H a wash. Shima togarashi. So it's like the the Okinawan island specific. Uh, Hop. Really? Okay. Yeah. So this is uh, uh yeah. So I guess it's like they make this uh, hot sauce. Okay, and then, and then they made a chip. Bet, yeah. And they call it habu hot pepper in Okinawa. Um, they have a, a type of uh, alcohol called awamori, and uh, they have another version called habushu, and it has like a snake inside, like a real snake. It's, it's dead. Uh, if you've ever been to Tatan Yoko, we actually have a bottle uh, of it in there. Um, the poisonous snake. Yeah. Is, so, it's, oh, my hair looks horrible. It's, no, no, you look great. Um, uh, but yeah, it's like a traditional kind of drink that they have there, so... Uh, it's supposed to give you energy. Yeah, like it's a... Good for you. I guess uh, one of those energy drinks uh anyhow uh, i don't think that there's no snake in here but uh i guess uh there's a lot of habu themed things from uh, uh okinawa so uh we've got that um then we've got some kid cats over here um salty lemon kid cats uh that's that sounds interesting um we've got another kid cat it's uh Cookies and cream, Kit Kat. This one, Risa said that it is recommended that we freeze it before we eat it, but I think you could just eat it as is. Uh, and then we've got Mikan bars, which are like little oranges uh, in like a fruit ice. It's not an ice cream, but it's uh, it's like a fruit bar. Uh, these are pretty good. Um, so uh, I will let you guys vote. What do you What do you want? Uh, do you want Doritos? Do you want Habu hot pepper chips? You want salty lemon Kit Kats? Cookies and cream Kit Kats or uh, me can bars. I'll, uh, I'll let the voting s start. Kick up. I don't know. We'll see what uh, people say. Um, Evan thinks that we should have the uh, negative. Okay, salt lemon. Salt lemon Kit Kat sounds good. All of them. Oh, it's too early to eat all of them. Lemon Kit Kats. Okay, lemon Kit Kats seem to be the winner. Um, you, you both wasabi Doritos. Salt lemon. Okay, it's gonna be the fruit bars. Hot pepper. Damn, so many. Uh, I'm thinking we're gonna go with the uh, the salt lemon here. That is clearly the winner. Um, how about those bottles behind you? Um, yeah, there's a couple of bottles behind us here. Um, hot pepper chips, hot chips. Okay, we're gonna do salt lemon, and then I'm gonna do one of the chips. You guys, uh, it's it's the hot pepper chips. 
I think I think there's a little bit more votes on the hot chips. Okay, so we're gonna do that. Um, we'll save these ones for next time. So that's what we're gonna do today uh, to wrap up this live stream. Um, I wish we could send out snacks in our shipments, but because it's cross border, like you really like from like Canada to USA is like the bulk of our of our shipments. Um, you can't send food. Uh, so yeah, it's. Uh, I would love to put snacks in every 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 package, but uh, the border stuff. It's uh, it's not my it's not my rule. Um, are these like really insanely hot? There's a warning here. Well, it does say that like you know don't if you're a kid or if you don't like hot stuff don't need it. But I mean, I doubt it. Yeah, I doubt that these are gonna be like fire. Yeah. Okay. So. Oh. Oh. So this um. This hot sauce, uh -huh. they make it with, like, of course, the chili, but uh, with awamori and shikwasa juice also. So it's okay. got, like, a little bit of tanginess. Okay. So it's, it's got the awamori, uh, but not habushu. So th that's the difference is habushu is the snake version of awamori. And shikwasa is like a little citrus fruit that is native to Okinawa. It's like a... It's like a green. It's like a it's, smaller. It's kind of like a la lime. lime, yeah. It's like a, a little it's sweeter very... than a lime, I think. Mm, is it? Yeah, it's a good lime alternative. Okay, uh, you want to crack that open? Okay, pretty orange. Okay, yeah, very orange. How does it smell? It doesn't smell spicy. No. It doesn't give me the. You know. That the the nose drip. Yeah, I don't. It smells a little tang, like that. Like yeah, there's no like sour. heat on that on that spice. So let's uh let's uh grab a chip. Looks nice here, like a like a any old chip here. Oh, hold on, gotta do our little taste test here. Okay. Oh yeah. Very tangy. Yeah, the ta it's like extremely tangy. Like it's not, the heat doesn't get you, but they're like really sour. So that like gives you a tongue tingle. I don't Like I felt like it. This. It's, it's not bad. It's not bad, but it's like. It's too, it's too sour. Yeah, it's not the heat that gets you with these. It's the sourness. It's like, kind of like, like my, Tabasco, my, but with like more sour. Yeah, like my tongue instantly, like my mouth watered. Instantly, you know, mm -hmm. it, 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 it triggered something like I'm salivating a lot. It's very shikwasa. Mm. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. going on me. These are okay. Yeah, I, I could eat a whole bag of these. Okay. Oh, yeah, three chips in, you're kind of feeling the heat. Yeah. I feel the heat. It's not. It's not as bad. Like I could eat these all, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not I like don't know. not the whole bag to me. Uh, it's not stopping me from eating. Like sometimes oh. you have a heat where you're just like, okay, I need a break, but I, I can eat the whole thing, two chips at a time, no problem. Good. That's good. We need to do a palate cleanse before we get into that chocolate. Um, Coffee? Uh, yeah. It's got milk in it. Yeah, that should do it. <clears throat> so we got some... Yeah, I gotta get mine. Are they at least crunchy? They're crunchy. Yeah, they're a good chip. They're like a Lay's. Like a Lay's kind of yeah, texture. Very thin. Very thin. Um, yeah, I like that. It's not bad. Okay. Okay. Hey, my tongue is milky now. So, <sighs> salt lemon Kit Kat. So this is like a, I guess, a summer limited edition kind of thing. Mm. Let's uh, open that up. Ooh, it's a little melty. Okay, we we weren't storing these in the fridge, and uh, it's a little hot, so. Maybe it's not the best, uh... Jesus. Hey. Touch it. 
so much. Yeah, they're okay. They're fine. Yeah, I yeah. just can't break it. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh. It's okay. Well. There we go. So yeah, we've got that. It didn't. It wasn't a perfect bake. It's a uh, white chocolate here. And uh, give this a try. Oh yeah. Instant lemon taste. Hmm. Right. Do I taste the salt? I don't know. I don't taste the salt. It's just all lemon. Yeah. Hmm. It's all lemon. The crunch of the you know cookie center of the Kit Kat. This is all right. I couldn't eat more oh, than yeah. that. Like this little two like mini bar thing. That's it. And it's yeah. really sweet. I, I do. I think I do taste the salt. It's just that like after this, like it's a little. My mouth is a little tainted. Yeah. Right. Somebody said we should have had the, the chocolate before yeah. the chips. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> Definitely. Um, so that is. Um, Salty Lemon Kit Kat. If you can find them, give them a try. You know, I think a lot of Asian grocery stores, um, if you're outside of uh, Japan, obviously. Um, I know in Canada, there's a grocery store chain called TNT. Um, they sometimes have uh, import uh, Japanese chocolates. Um, they may not have all the latest stuff, but um, they often have, like, different flavors. Yeah. So, I, I do find it though, like they kind of play it safe. They go, they don't bring in like all the cra every single crazy flavor. Yeah, they might just have like the matcha ones or like a white chocolate or something. But yeah, there's a there's like a lot of seasonal ones. There's so many. Every time we go to the grocery store, there seems to be a new one. Um, so they're 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 always pumping out a we new flavor. Have a salty lychee also. Yeah, there was there's a salty lychee Pepsi, um, that I have to get. So I'm gonna have that for next week. I'm gonna give that a try. Um, anyhow, I, I know, uh, I don't know if you guys drink beers, but maybe a beer tasting of Japanese brands would be nice. Risa likes beer. Yeah. Um, do. so we will, we'll, we'll have that for next week. I'll have my, uh, Pepsi. Morning beers. Yeah, morning beer. Uh, I'm going to have my lychee Pepsi for next week. And, uh, we're going to do some, uh, some drink taste tests with you guys. H Mart in Toronto has some good stuff. Right on. Um, yeah, there's also a little, what was the name? And like you know where Dutil is on uh, on uh, Queen Street there in Toronto, there's a little Asian grocery store like down the street from them. I forget what they're called. Um, yeah, if you're in Toronto, you probably know it. Uh, but yeah, they usually have some pretty good stuff. Um, anyhow, if, if if you're interested in any of these things, check out your local Asian grocery store. They usually have some kind of import stuff. Please more, make more denim shirts with cats in double XL. I will keep that in mind, sir. Um, anyways, thanks for joining me and Risa on another uh, live stream, uh, live from Japan. Uh, have a great Friday evening. Have a great weekend. PAT Korean store, that's true, in Toronto. PAT also has some good stuff. Um, thanks for joining us. We will see you again next week. Have a wonderful weekend. And uh, I don't know. Stay, stay safe out there. Stay safe. <laughs> All right, bye, guys. <laughs>